to start off um, a head model um, box modeling what we generally do or the way I generally do it is to start with a box um, like so um, I'm actually using silo uh, by never center for this particular project but you can actually use any subdivision modeling packages and I'll try and keep it as generic as possible um, when you box model the idea really is to be as in the early stages just look for um, form and shape rather than any detail and we won't be focusing on edge loops much for the first um, half hour or so so what I generally do is set up something called symmetry first of all which I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with so I'll take a box that's on um, this is the Z axis here the blue one going in and out of the screen and this is the X axis left and right so I'm going to make symmetry across the um, axis here so you can see that's the mesh so far and I'm going to use um, in silo I'm just going to use uh, instance mirror which is just a way to symmetrically model like so so I'm just modeling on this side and this side will reflect the changes so it's not a real model on the other side and it can be turned on and off at will so that helps us um, keeps the center line here so if you think that this is the core of the head here right, so we'll move it up slightly I'm using basic move rotate and scale um, functions for the moment so learn those uh, if you're doing this video hopefully you're beyond beginner and you you understand the tools in the package of your choice I'm just looking at ways to split the mesh first of all so I use several ways to do that in in this package so I either select around the mesh to look where the edge loop is going so with a double click I can see it goes all the way around um, or you can simply just split it by selecting a, an edge and then splitting through so all I'm doing at the moment as I, as I've said is going for the shape of the head so I'm pulling up the back of the head here I'm pulling down the front of the head here and that gives me a, a plane for the face here and we'll put eyes etc on that much much later when we've got the shape um, locked off really for the whole of the head um, I'm going to run a split all the way up there you don't have to select this in this package but like I said I do it because it shows me where the split will run like so and I'm doing absolutely no work on detail at all I'm literally just looking at form I did an extrude down then I'm going into point mode now and I'm doing what's called tweaking which is very very familiar to anyone who poly models tweaking takes up most of your time because you are either tweaking tweaking one vertice at a time to get the shape right or you're tweaking a large group which in this package is called soft selection which we'll do later on so single vertice sh uh, movements giving me an overall shape to work from where I feel I need more polygons to work with I just run a split through and later on um, you stop doing that as soon as you're ready to put detail and if you start running splits right the way through your mesh you end up with far too many polygons in wrong places so this is something you do very early on so side on you can see if you want to look at it in other views you have got other views of course um, there's a front view and there's a left view generally box modeling I tend to stick with just the perspective you don't really need the others that often so this line here very crucial eventually will be the jaw line you can see that side and that side that will be the jaw line there's no flow there at all at the moment I'm going to run one through here that'll start giving us a little bit more detail and another split there and we'll carry on doing what we've been doing which is tweaking constantly move the mesh around always be looking around look at it from angles that you wouldn't expect if you look down on the top of a head you'll see that the 
the face isn't flat usually it's got it's tapered back from the nose area so even though this is a, a creature a fantasy creature we're taking our steer from true geometry true anatomy um, and all right we're not all anatomy students but I would highly recommend either life drawing classes or some form of online class for anatomy um, for any organic modeler you, you, you've got to understand anatomy whether it be animal human uh, anything as long as it's real and you under start to understand bone structure bones um, muscle groups etc um, here endeth the lesson on anatomy um, I've run a split around the front and again it's given me more polygons to play with to round the mesh off and again I'm looking for just looking for opportunities to make it match the um, the reference One tip that most modelers will give you, and most people who use computers actually would give you, is uh, I use this button down here, save incremental, um, and I hit it, try and hit it every four or five minutes or so. Um, you can see now I'm on version two of this model, um, and that's simply an iteration upwards, so I started on one. If in doubt, hit save incremental and you've got that next stage saved doesn't take up a lot of hard drive space because they're only small models certainly at this stage but the the tears that follow when you have a a loss in whatever package you're using it's it's just not worth it so um, get into the habit especially if you're a, a newer modeler you haven't experienced a big crash at a time when you've spent three or four hours on something um, heartbreaking so, shape of the head is coming along quite nicely. Up the front of the face, fairly okay. Top of the head probably needs to go higher now. I'm looking at the reference off camera um, and I'm trying to match the shape um, without having it in the um, screen. Another way of modeling that's very, very popular um, is either point by point or edge modeling where you have a reference image in the the actual paint in here you would have one at the front and one at the side very common been around for a long long time uh, box modeling is very different in that you're working in a perspective mode um, in some packages you'll put planes in the perspective mode and then you would have um, you would actually model with images on those planes It's going to move the mesh up a little bit there now because uh, because we'd uh, extended down with the neck, it was uh, quite low down. And we'll just pull this back a little bit now. So you're looking at it from the different angles, you can see where you've gone in too far. Um, sometimes squash the mesh in. At this point you can switch on soft selection in this package or um, it's different in different packages but this will give you an area of effect so you can tweak using more than one polygon at a more than one vertice at a time or one polygon if you wish um, and that gives you the ability just to change the shape of the mesh. I generally use this at higher reses but it's working well at this point. So quite happy with the way that's gone so far. That's not a million miles off the shape that I want. I'm actually going to just give it a little save there. Okay, turn soft selection off. Let's pull that front out a little bit. Now what? I'll do now is start. Uh, oh, hang on, I pulled it out too far at the front there. I have to switch soft selection back on. It's funny you keep spotting things as you as you're working, and this is this is why tweaking is so important when you get to the, the heavy duty tweaking stages because you'll tweak and tweak and tweak until you're happy with the the mesh. 
and it's definitely a good plan to get spend more time getting your shape right before you do any detail um, simply because tweaking lots and lots of vertices uh, becomes painful so the quicker you can get the sh or the, the, the earlier you get the shape locked off and correct the easier it becomes later on it's nothing worse than trying to correct a model when there's thousands and thousands of vertices to move around and smooth and keep them getting them into the right locations so that will do for now okay so I'm going to put some of the main um, uh, features in now one thing um, we, we haven't talked about yet we haven't looked at topology yet and not quite deliberately really so I'll correct topology as we go once we've got the main areas in place um, and it will change on the flight it'll change lots and lots through the course of this of this uh, modeling um, so again I keep stressing this don't worry about topology too much at this stage uh, we know that the flow isn't right along here for example there's that will be the jawline and it doesn't flow at all yet but that's to come we've got, we've got that bit to come um, later on so and again I'm going to put some splits in now so one down there and I'll split right the way through that side there I'm okay with that and that gives us the ability to just change the the jawline a little bit ready for what we're about to do which is put in mouth and eye areas we can afford one more split through there I think through the center don't worry if you've got an end gone that is an end gone so that is a polygon that has one two three four five sides every other polygon in this is mesh so far is a quad with one two three four as you'll see okay that is a big no-no says that in uh, virtually every book on modeling in terms of not every package even handles i think most of them do now but they didn't use to handle end gone so we, we steer clear them wherever possible stay clear of them uh, and we limit the number of triangles but I'll come to that during the model the reason I've left that there now is I'm not to I don't want to put any more polygons um, loops through the middle of the back there and I'm going to turn the flow up here so I need a little bit of, of movement Um what we'll do actually I'll split that along there so I've got a triangle now to deal with rather than a quad this is a nasty little area so far and it won't remain like that um, so I suppose it's just a point to remember really. 